here we are with Brandy, getting her ready to go home and clipping her toenails here. These are uh, my favorite toenail clippers, and I don't know if you can see or not, but you get the toenail in there. Um, it's got this little hole, and when you close it like that, it squeezes it. But I think they're the safest. Well, at least that's what I'm more used to. I used to do, use them on our Labrador Retrievers. So they work really well. Just pull the hair back, clip the little toenail. I usually do this before the bath. You have to kind of look and see where the quick starts and the nail, where the nail meets the quick there underneath to, so that you don't cut too short. And if for some reason you do cut too short and it bleeds a little, this is a uh, steptic powder that is good. You just take a little pinch and hold it on there and it stops right away. My back feet, I usually hold them like this, push the hair back here and um, just want to be really careful not to cut too short, but you do need to get enough nail so that um, the, if you don't cut their nails very often, the quick grows out longer and the nails are um, just, you know, it's, it's harder to cut without them bleeding. So you want to keep short accounts and start when they're puppies and um, probably every two weeks is what I would recommend trimming the nails. So it is something you probably want to do in between a groomer. You can do the groomer once a month if you want. I wouldn't really bathe more than that because it can dry out their skin. If you really want to do it, maybe every two weeks or every three weeks, but I would not recommend every week. It can make them have drier skin and then they have can develop allergies and itching. And Some puppies are a little more still than others and Brandy did really good. But now the next thing is we do the uh, anals, the, the rear end back here to get this trimmed, this hair. Um, and just trim that away a little bit to keep that area clean. And then this is where she pees and you want to make sure you're not getting the skin there, but you want to kind of look around and trim that hair around there so that it, um, sometimes I'll hold them like this. It may be a little easier. Depends on the puppy. But just be real careful. But you don't want that hair to bunch up. And if you don't keep it trimmed, it will. The urine will make it stick together and then you can get urinary infections. You don't want that, so do that. And then on the ears, um, I I trimmed her ear or plucked her ears a couple weeks ago, but there's some more hair inside the ear. You take this and you twist, you, you clamp it and you twist and then pull and it pulls that right out. It sometimes hurts a little, but usually they're pretty good. Brandy's being a good girl. Twist and then pull and always rub it to make it feel better. But you want to get this hair out at the inside of the canal. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, ear infections. And the Shih Tzu, especially these puppies that haven't gone home yet, when they're still at the breeder's house, they have a lot of hair in their ears. And then if you once you uh, keep them on a regular grooming schedule, that's something the groomer will do. But if you want to do it yourself, I've got these needle nose um, tweezers on my Sunny Bell Favorites page. I like them because they're curved, and you can clamp the hair, twist it, and then pull and it just comes out better. Sometimes you can get it with your fingernails if you've got fingernails, but it really doesn't, sometimes it'll come out that way, but a lot of the stubborn ones, you really need the tweezers. So almost done here on this ear. We'll leave the rest for the groomer. It's not Got almost all of it out, but I don't want to just stress them out. They're going to be traveling with the pet nanny today. So here we go. We're going to get this twist and pull. Good girl, Brandy. You're doing such a good job. So proud of you. You're being a big girl. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now hold on. So you can turn it the other way too, where it doesn't go down. You can either have it pointing in or pointing up. 
So I had to move it in that case just to get keep it from pinching her skin. Almost through. But I like the way it, they clamp together like that and then they don't kind of open and that holds the hair better. Have to use these in surgery. Clamp off an artery. Okay, so that's it. Uh -huh. And then um, we do take our scissors. I won't do it right now, but we take our scissors, you comb the hair in between the eyes and the nose and uh, you'll, you'll want to trim this way and this way on the Shih Tzu um, to keep this hair from poking into their eyes. They um, like this right here. I've already trimmed it before. Now I'm going to trim it again, but she's fixing to have her bath and I'll probably trim after. Okay, so here's Brandy. <laughs> this is before her bath, but our, she's all trimmed and ready for her bath and blow dry. Okay, bye-bye. So we're about to bathe Brandy. I thought I might as well video. Let's see. Get the water where it's not too hot. If you do it on the inside of your wrist and it's not too hot on you, then it won't be too hot on them. I have an old work shirt on because I do get wet. Sometimes they dog paddle and splash me. But you just get them all wet. Wet them down before you get your shampoo. And the hair behind their legs here. Um, they've, got, they've got a double coat, so you have to work hard to get all the way down. If you just wet them real fast, you're going to be dry underneath here. So you got to get all the way down to the skin. Get them soaked to the skin. But this hair behind each leg is kind of thick. So I usually rub it a lot under the water. Also, um, I'm going to express her anals a little bit. Um, I'll have to show you that on another video because this is down in the sink. It stinks and it squirts out. But there's an anal gland in here and it gets full. And when they have a bowel movement, it should empty, um, but on the Shih Tzu, a lot of times it, it fills up and so the groomer or the veterinarian can empty that for you unless you know how to do it yourself, but it is stinky. It's best to do it right before a bath. Kind of smells like a male cat. It's great. But now we're going to smell good. Yeah, this is Brandy. Brandy's going home to Florida today. I live with Wanda. Wanda's got three other puppies from us. She and her husband travel on an RV, take the puppies with them. She's going to have a good life. Excited for her. Okay, so now this is my shampoo. It's uh, Pro Care, made by Mel Luca. I just put some on here and I get it on my thumb and carefully under the eye uh, with the shampoo on my thumb, I just kind of rub underneath here. Don't get it in their eyes, but you want to get their mustache here and underneath and a little bit. I don't I don't go all the way down to their eyes on top of their head, but uh, not too much on their ears. You don't want to get that much water around their nose and ears and eyes, but then I just rub really well on the paws. Sometimes they'll pick up a stool they walk through and it gets in their paws. So you always need to be sure you get, make sure their paw pads are clean and no debris is stuck in there. Just rubbing really good. Rub the shampoo in. Getting that hair behind each leg is important. That thick hair back here. Add a little more shampoo to the bottom. Wash your bottom real good. Chest and tummy. There's her neck. Then we start rinsing. These puppies are small enough that I can hold them. See your dog paddling? <laughs> uh, they're instinct. When they're underwater, they start dog paddling. But um, these puppies are small enough I can hold them through most of the bath. Um, she is three pounds at 10 weeks old. She's an orange liver sable. She has a liver chocolate nose. And this yellow, orangey yellow coat is her undercoat. And you see it more in the, when you're taking a bath, bathing her. 
Um, when the hair's dry, you see a little bit more of the darker. But the darker will grow out. And if you cut her in a short puppy coat, she will look very, very blonde. But she'll have the darker chocolate ears and a little bit on the face. Okay, so we've got her all. Now this is my, uh, she's all rinsed. This is my conditioner. And this is what really smells good. A lot of people ask me what shampoo I use because they like to smell. I do like this um, Melaleuca, the ProCare. It has tea tree oil in it. And it's really good. Really, really like it. Um, this other is Bio Groom, Groom and Fresh. I just got it at a tractor supply, but it may be on Amazon. If it is, I should probably put it on my Sunnydale Favorites page. This uh, Melaleuca, you can order from them, but they also have really great household products. Um, we use our laundry detergent from them and our dishwashing soap is in, the shampoo, the deodorant. We get vitamins from them, which are so much better than your regular vitamins. Um, and they're, they're actually absorbed by your body where a lot of those vitamins are not. Anyway, so we are our preferred customer with Melaleuca. And if you're interested in being a preferred customer, you can get a discount on the shampoo or anything else, all the different products. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about that if you are interested in Melaleuca. So we're almost through. When I put the, shampoo, the um, conditioner on, the cream rinse, I don't... Uh, I don't rinse it as well as I do the shampoo because I kind of like to leave a little bit in. Um, I did rinse it pretty well there because I was talking. Okay, now I'm gonna get a towel and I just, uh, got this one here that I've used with the puppy before. There we go. So here's little Brandy. <laughs> and we'll just towel dry her and then I'll use the um, the epiotic ear uh, solution to pull the water out of her ears with a cotton ball. Okay, so we have Brandy towel dried and um, we are going to put this epiotic in her ears. This is the solution here. It's backwards. Um, Put that in her ear, fill the ear canal, squeeze it, rub it. Then you take a half jumbo um, cotton ball and you poke it in and twist kind of gently, but trying to firmly also get all the way down in the ear canal. I hold it up. I kind of wiggle it around like that while I'm holding the ear. And um, some puppies ears are really large openings and then others are really small. Brandy's is about average. Her brother, um, Louie, had bigger ear canals, and her sister, Adora, actually had smaller, so. So you just twist, just twist that in there like that. She's being very patient. So good girl, Brandy. You're such a good girl. Yeah. So, and usually it comes out clean if you have ear mites, it's going to come out with brown dirt all over it. Um, we don't have ear mites, so it comes out clean. So that's the ear part, and then I'm going to blow dry. So it's going to be loud. And I just I prop my, uh, prop up my hair dryer on a towel. in it in front of it where you can see it blow dry and blow in the hair and you want to keep the puppy moving so it doesn't burn her and get in one spot too long but I, I use that air there in my metal comb to uh, comb through the hair to get it all the way to the skin because the Shih Tzu has a double coat so you want to get the hair dried all the way to the skin Pretty much the only way to do it is to use a, a metal comb, but you don't want to stay in one spot too long. So I just move around. 
I have it on a low speed, not high. Sometimes when it's on high, it's just too hot and it's also too loud for the puppies. They don't like it already on low, so. But I always come backwards on the feet too, on the back of the legs. In the front, I just hold the paw and come all the way up the legs, come backwards. Be careful with them. And in their ears. Um, and come backwards on their ears a little bit, behind their ear, on the inside of their ear, with that hair. Here on the inside and just come to the side. All the time keeping them moving. And then sometimes I just use my hands like this. They like it. They think I'm petting them and playing with them. We have a good girl. We have a good girl. Good girl. Good girl. No puppy likes their uh, tail comb, but I do I do try to comb it backwards. They don't really like that. But they have to get used to it when they're Shih Tzu because grooming is all part of Shih Tzu breed. And all this moisture, you want to just avoid fungus by keeping them dry. So if their eyes tend to be watery every day, you want to dry that. Uh, you can use a wet washcloth or they have special wipes they sell. The new vet plus that we give our puppies is supposed to help that eye drainage. Um, it builds their immune system and helps allergies and stuff. Sometimes that is from the breed itself. Sometimes it's from excessive allergies to something. So the new vet is a good thing. And it also helps the coat quality. Hopefully you can hear me better. I'm going to take this dry towel here, and I'm just going to pull at the hair um, over her nose and and uh, under her, her mustache here. And um, just kind of taking the towel between my fingers and pulling at that hair just a little bit to kind of towel dry it. It's hard to get it on the hair dryer. It's hard because their eyes, the hair dryer is hot. So it will air dry, but you just... It's nice to get it a little bit drier with the towel dry. So I just pinch it with the towel and pull, pull a little bit. I've got a hold of her ear to actually keep more control on her. I'm, now I'm pulling the hair behind her ear, kind of towel drying that a little bit. It feels good. She likes it. But on a Shih Tzu, when you're grooming and you need them to be still so you don't um, hurt them if you've got scissors and you're trying to cut near their eyes, you've got to keep their head still. So you can use their... Um, mustache or their chin hair, their beard or their ears, and they'll forgive you, won't you? Yes, yes, because it's not that bad. It's better than getting poked by scissors. So I just, um, when I'm done, I'm calm like this. You want to be careful around their eyes that you don't catch their eye, bottom eye lid. Fluff her up, help it to dry more. And if you can see, you can tell where you think she's dry, but she's really not. She's down here next to the skin. She's still damp. So we'll just blow dry a little bit more. And I just keep her moving. Keep the hair dryer moving. As you can tell under here, see, she's still damp. Use my fingers. Well, she just thinks I'm just rubbing her and scratching her. Which that feels good. She's being a good little girl. Precious girl, he's your precious. He's your precious. What are you looking at? Let's see. 
Mm -hmm. Wait to see her. Her tail's always wagging. Okay, be still. Be still. Don't keep inching up. 